Congratulations on finding your way to Classical Scores Library. This is one of the most comprehensive digital resources for printable music scores across genres, across countries, and across compositional styles and time periods. In this video, we'll briefly explore a few key elements of the database, and then we'll demonstrate techniques to help you search for and find a specific musical work. Let's begin! When you first land on Classical Scores Library, you'll find a brief description as well as a list of the volumes you have access to through your library. As you continue to scroll down, you'll see options to browse by title, genre, instrument, people, publishers, time periods, and of course, composers. These browse categories will also appear later as options to refine your search. Let's browse titles. As you can see, browse results are arranged alphabetically, which makes a lot of sense, but with tens of thousands of results in the collection, it's not very practical. To help bring it down to something manageable, you can use the refinements on the left-hand side. One quirk of these browse categories is very important to be aware of. The refinement options are not universally the same across browse categories. For example, Let's compare the refinement options in a title browse to those in a composer browse. In browse title, you have composer, publisher, date published, date written, time period, score type, and content. But in composer browse, you have genre, time period, instrument played, musical key, and year composed. Needless to say, understanding that there might be differences in how to refine your search can be a tremendous time saver if you're looking for works specific to your instrument or voice range. Okay, let's reset and go back to the landing page by following the breadcrumb here near the top of the screen. All right, so now let's say you already know what piece you're looking for. For example, let's try to find Three Romances Without Words, Opus 17 by Gabriel Fauré. The work we're looking for, as you most likely know, is known both by its English title, Three Romances Without Words, as well as its original French title, Trois Romances Sans Parole. So which version do you search for? You need to remember one very important thing. Our search results are only as good as the metadata in the record, and that metadata in the record comes directly from the score in hand. So choosing to search in one language over the other can actually deeply impact our chances of finding what we're looking for. So what do we do? The answer might be more simple than you think. We just need to find that one data point that they all share in common. With classical music, it's typically the opus number. The opus number is the one constant identifier for a work, no matter how many titles or nicknames it might have. So let's do that. You can use the search box embedded in the database webpage, or you can use the search box located in the upper right. When you click on that box, it's gonna pop over to the left for you. Okay, so I'm going to begin typing the word foray. And as you'll see, it's gonna make a couple suggestions based on recent popular searches. I don't find the piece I'm looking for, but I do notice that it uses the abbreviation for opus, OP period. I'm going to use that exact same thing. So I'm going to continue typing opus 17, and you'll notice I'm putting it in quotes so the search reads it as a phrase. All right, we found what we were looking for. You can click on the title to open it up, and once you're there, you'll see you have all the options to email the score to your professor, your student, or your accompanist, so long as they're a Tulane affiliate. You can also print the score out. If you also decide to create a personalized user profile within the library subscription, then you can then select the score to add to a playlist. And once it's there, you can add personal annotations to the score, which you'll have access to for as long as you're an active member of the Tulane community. Well, that brings this video to an end. If you have any questions along the way, please don't hesitate to contact us. You can get in touch with Media Services by emailing mediaservices at tulane.edu. Thank you so much for your time and attention.